Today is one of the few sunny days in Utah in the winter. So we're going to take advantage and reinforce the frame on this Lippert frame on our iconic 1913 CB. These frames are famous for cracking right here where they weld. I've seen cracks over a foot long in the frame. And I've also seen these spring hangers twist and bend. They're not super strong. They're just kind of welded on there vertically. So today I'm going to be reinforcing this so it will never crack in the first place and stiffening it up. All right, for our braces, we are using 120 wall, eighth inch thick by six inches. All right, here's my plate. I've got some fish mouths in it. I've got some small plug holes that I can plug weld those. <clears throat> now the next step is to grind away anything that's not flat. So we're going to have to grind away these screws and remove these brackets. At least up there. I should probably remove them down there too. So i got to remove these gussets. This is actually usually right where it cracks. is right where that weld is. So we're going to preempt that. All right, I got the first gusset off. Check it out. No wonder it rusts. They don't paint underneath the gussets. Lippert, shame on you. That is awful. They weld it and then paint over the top and then it rusts in there. You can already see starting to gouge a little. This is sad. This trailer's brand new and it's already rusting at the frame. I'm glad I caught it when I did. Gonna grind that smooth. Do the same thing to the rest and hope to never ever have this problem because I'm gonna paint stuff, not cover it up. That is ridiculous. Because I caught it early on and nothing is rusted through, it was all just surface rust, I was able to clean it all up. I'm gonna paint that, do the same thing on the others, and then get everything ready for that frame plate. I mean, chances are these may never actually break and crack if they'd actually painted them and welded those correctly. What a shame that there are so many trailers out there right now with that rust eating away on there. And it's not just Attitude or Eclipse trailers. I mean, this is anyone that Lippert makes a frame for. And Lippert blames it on Eclipse and says Eclipse doesn't design a good frame. And Eclipse blames it on Lippert and said, Lippert built the frame, it should be working. That is awful. We're gonna fix it. We're gonna do it right. Their welds are fine. A lot of people critique Lippert's welds. On this trailer, they're fine. Just the fact that they don't paint in there is not fine. Same story, no paint, and it's already rusting. And we live in the desert. Imagine if you were back east somewhere, this thing would just fall apart. Every gusset has been removed. We've painted the rusty frame. And we made our own massive plate here that's going to go on there. I painted the backside just so it wouldn't attract rust. I got my heater to keep me going. The only thing getting me through all this is the thought of being in Tucson in two weeks where it'll be 70 degrees in the daytime, not 30 degrees. It's worth it, I can muscle it out to get this done. And I gotta do this, you gotta do your trailer right. Okay, I've set the new plate in there. I'm gonna clamp it down and start welding it in. I'm excited for this part, mostly because it's warm. It's cold, I'm ready to be done. I still got one other side to do that I'm gonna call it a night. Some of these are pretty. All of them penetrate and have great penetration and heat. That is gonna be so robust compared to how it was. It's essentially a quarter inch thick there, which will be great. And I need to add gussets to it once I put some paint on there. I'm calling it a night, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, here's where we left off last night. The plates have all been welded on. 
My welds don't look as disgusting as I remembered. This Rust-Oleum self-etching primer, you can find it at Home Depot. It is the only thing I put on raw metal. It chemically etches into the metal, so it's more than just sticking to it. What we don't want is rust getting in between the plates and rusting this from the inside out. We don't, there's lots of rocks and debris that's gonna be in here from driving. We don't want that. I don't really care about runs right now. These welds are thirsty. I care more about getting this in there. Now when you weld things on this side and put a bead on it, on the back side it gets hot and the paint gets weak. So here you can see the good penetration made the paint weak. So we've got to grind this off and repaint the inside. Look at all that, that's great. Otherwise it's going to rust <clears throat> from the inside out and rust is not our friend. I've got these rice warmers tucked into my shirt to keep me warm during all of this. All right, so we've got the primer down and that should be good to not let rust get in there. But just to make sure, I'm worried about rust dripping down in there and rusting these from the inside out. So I'm gonna use some of this seam sealer. I've used this before in my 4x4 bodywork applications. It's kind of like caulking, like you would think for cars. It can be painted, except it doesn't attract water. A lot of silicone-based sealants attract water and end up rusting things because they absorb water. This doesn't, so I'm gonna apply this all over, seal that totally up. This is probably overkill, but it makes me feel better. You can get this for about 15 bucks a bottle at AutoZone, and I'm hoping I can get all of this done with two bottles, one bottle per side. gonna look kind of goofy but I don't care what it looks like as long as it doesn't let water in and rust. I sure made a mess out of that but it's gonna be sealed and that's all that matters. It's gonna be a gusset on top of each spring hanger like there was before and I'm gonna weld it to that plate and weld it to here. So I'm gonna weld it all the way across not just in the middle like they did. So that brings me to the next part. A big snowstorm's coming tomorrow so I'm gonna be working all night tonight to get part two done. Part two what it does, if you look at this, this is really just eighth inch C channel hanging down from the frame. Every time you turn, it puts tremendous stress on these and they wanna buckle underneath. So Lippert has a repair document for how to fix these when they get twisted and what they do is they run a big bar from this one all the way to the other one and, and weld them together so they don't move and then you gusset it all in. And that's what I'll be doing tonight. You do one on the front, middle, and back. So taking a look down here, my middle support has that freshwater drain valve right in the way. And my back support has the fuel tank in the way. But my front supports are clear. So I can at least run the normal tube on the front supports and I'll do some modifying on the other ones. All in all for these modifications, it's cost me about $300 in parts and materials. And probably 20 hours of time. The time is the hard part, but it's kind of fun to do, and it's fun to do myself and to make sure it's being done right. Part of me loves working on vehicles and modifying things, and the other part of me just wants them to work all the time so I can spend time doing what I love. It's been a few days since I've been out here. It hasn't got over 32, and I've been too chicken to come out and lay on the cold cement and work. But today we're up to 39. The idea is to weld these bars between these. One tricky part, this is in the way. That's a pain. Another tricky part on the middle one is that hose is in the way. And on the back one, the fuel tank is in the way. I'm not even sure I'm gonna use the fuel tank. I kind of wish I could just pull the whole fuel system off and put something else there, but that's another problem for another day. It's sad when you're under here finding how many of these cross members up here were never ever welded from the factory. All right, so we barely got enough room there. It's really frustrating 
how much stuff hangs down here. Like this. This is your main wiring. They could have... It would have taken 10 seconds to just loop it over this bar and over this bar. And have all this wiring tucked up. But they were lazy and just let it all hang down here. Same with these low point drains. Like, these hoses do not need... See, they started routing it through there. They could have continued and kept this all out of the way. That would have been really nice, but no one was thinking. The thing is on these cheap under $30,000 trailers is they're not built great, but the trailers that are 50 grand are built better, but not much better. So you could buy two of these for something like what an outdoors RV costs and something like uh, Momentum grand designs cost and those are great trailers you don't have to reinforce the frame and add insulation and stuff but they're not twenty five thousand dollars better great in my opinion so i'd rather buy the cheaper one like this do a little bit of work and get it where it needs to be for way less than the price of the super nice ones man if i could design this myself i would have just run those over there instead of under this and over that put a little 180 in that hose all right, with these cut, well, I'm gonna go get an elbow and run these backwards so they don't have to cross under here. Same with that one. We're gonna have more room for these cross members now. I've been losing sleep about how to solve that. I rerouted the PEX line under there, as you can see. So yeah, making small progress and enjoying this warm winter day. This guy is welded up there to strengthen the frame so the axles don't sway. Still got one to do here and one to do there. 